So today on the Bigfoot Researcher's Journal, we're looking at uh, some footage that we shot that I just reviewed, and uh, there's a Bigfoot hiding behind a cypress tree watching people swim. And, uh, and this is a popular location for tourism. Uh, the creatures are embedded in this area, and, uh, and we're gonna take a look at him, and you can see plainly that that's one of these creatures. He's blending in really well, but as the frames develop, we get plenty of information. There's plenty of data here confirming that we've got one of these guys watching here. And uh, and he's just hanging out, peeking around the cypress tree. Is there other ones with him? It's possible. We've caught other ones here, and we're gonna look at one more in uh, the footage that, uh, that we caught from this exact same clip. But like I said, the interesting part of this is um, is that he's watching people swim. So for me, this makes perfect sense because um, we've, you know, been following the same threads in the investigation where they're blending in and they're running off on foot and we hear them sneaking up. So our views are that they're natural and, uh, and so therefore the ways that they blend in, the, the, the survival methods they have are natural. The ways they observe us and conceal themselves are natural. So it's really just a question of putting together that guerrilla warfare puzzle on how, you know, counter surveillance works in these environments. And the obvious choices uh, are not always, uh, you know, what they pick. It's stuff like this. They're blending in on the side of the spring and people can't see them. They're there though. And they're, they're embedded in that bank. And we see these symmetries and the achromatic bone structures of the creatures plainly in a lot of the shots uh, of while we're there. And it's full of people recreating, swimming in the spring, hiking all around it. And they're just inside the hiking zones. People are behind these creatures and in front of these creatures. They're very comfortable with laying there watching you. It's frightening. We are uh, in the editor and we're looking at one of these creatures that um, is embedded in the bank. And I'm actually reviewing a video right now. So you're, you're, you're actually seeing the timeline, but you can see where I'm circling right here. This is the bank area right here. 
And then uh, this is the creature right here that we're looking at. You can see that's that symmetry and, uh, and recognizable instantly, right? You can see the thing's eyes. And, uh, but looking at it, there's other stuff going on on the bank, and it looks like there's a couple of them jammed in next to them. But uh, we can see uh, the creature's eyes. We can see the nose, uh, this entire uh, brow area. And here's the other eye and the other eye uh, area on this side over here and uh, in the brow and then this is where they jam in together and they get close and the diffusion and the retransmission of light this early in the morning uh, is is not boding well but we can see the brow we can see the eyes and uh, and we know there's some other stuff here but uh, he's definitely looking awesome and we got a great frame of how they embed in the banks this whole area right here is water that's the water line and these creatures will sit with their brows just outside the water. And, and in this case, we see one. This is ground. The ground comes up like this, and there are bushes on it. It appears that they've dug under the bank, and they're embedding themselves in it. Well, human, human beings use the Suwannee River. This is one of the banks on the Suwannee River. We can see there's other creatures here. They're lined up here, and they've dug in underneath the bank, burrowing under the bank the way gators do. This is uh, an incredible uh, shot of this guy in advancing frames. You can see we get some really interesting frames where we can see different parts of the creature's facial anatomy and even some of these other uh, things that are with him. But that one is the one we're staying focused on, uh, not the jam up. And, uh, and if we stay with that, we get some really interesting frames through these uh through this clip we can see eye shine coming back we can see the the edge right there of the of the individual right so we know we've got this is the edge of that individual right there that's the edge of his brow and uh, you can see there appears to be that cone shape in there and that's something you can just see it right so if it's above the brow that's another confirmation of our subjects and we know this right guys um is he poking through the ground it's possible. Um, we got all kinds of interesting stuff down the bank here. You can see this white here. This is the brow of another one of them. And, uh, and their faces are actually in the water. So they're enjoying the spring. But we got this guy. We'll stick with him. And, uh, and we'll try to advance. And look at these frames where we're getting eye shine. And look at You can see the nose perfectly. Look at the eye shine. We got the brow. And the next one is right there. Is there another one? I'm sure that the whole group of them is here because we were the first people at this particular spot that morning. But um, watching this guy, it's incredible. You can see this is not the ground. It's one of our subjects. And, uh, and it's easy to see that. You can see right there's his head. And uh, it's just a great shot. That guy next to him, it's possible that, uh, you know, we may get a frame or two of one of these other individuals. You know, there's something up here that I'm examining in the film and hopefully I'll be able to break that down in another clip. I shot several clips in this direction, uh, anticipating, since we were the first ones there, possibly catching movement of one of these creatures moving away from the spring, because I bet that they were using the spring uh, in the hottest months of the year, so that's when we camped. And, uh, and as you can see, plainly, He's embedded in that bank. This is the bank that goes up in where picnic tables are. People can walk down and stand right here on the edge of the water. And we can see what's there. It's incredible, man. Uh, moving through the frames, uh, we get real good shots of the mouth. And, uh, and there's even some movement there. Is, is it possible this is another creature as well? Um, sure, but we have so many frames confirming this guy's nose, and I have seen subjects that look exactly like him. Look at the eyes. I mean, come on. This is him, you know? When we have frames like this in a series with all of the other frames, what we end up with is confirmation of the species, and, and that's what this represents. So what we'll do is we'll use this data in the future in our research, and you can bet we're going to get better footage of, uh, of these creatures. Look at this frame. You can see his face there. Uh, it, it just is, it looks like a goblin, you know? Um, looking at it, like mixed with a monkey or something. Look at these frames. 
It's really killer. The brow right there is perfect. You know there's some other ones in there. You can see little portions of their uh, symmetry popping. The one next to him especially. At times he comes in clearer than the one we've been watching. But um, it's absolutely incredible behavior. And to recognize all of this after I have been here. Look at that. We get a little eye shine there. And this is that retransmission, and you can see the train, the change of the colors. There's like four or five different colors in this particular area right here, and uh, and and that's the retransmission. That's what the colorless skin does. It responds to what's around it, and and then puts it out like a blank canvas. It's incredible because you can watch it change colors, and can and you can see how it confuses you in the footage. And then there are obvious frames where, you know, we've got the identification of, these, of this species is here. You know, this is the same thing. You can see the nose. You can even see part of the cheekbone right there where it goes up. That could be uh, the edge of the nostril or the cheekbone, right? Sometimes they have those really wide nostrils. And, uh, and is it one of those right there? You can see where it, it appears to, to kind of stretch down. We also can see the one next to him a little bit here and how close they are to each other. Is it a young one? We get his nostrils. I mean, this is crazy. That they're embedded like this, and, uh, and it took so long. Look at this enormous head. You know, people walk right up here. It's the craziest thing, man. There it is, that, that, eye, that eye socket there all shadowed, and you can, you can see where it appears that the eyes closed in that. It's nuts. But taking it back into this part of the clip, um, you know, it seems to be that we have some of the better frames. And, uh, and so this is what we're relying on when we move into these spots uh, this season. When we're shooting in Central Florida, you can, you can bet we're going to be coming back with some killer footage. You can see his whole face there. Brow, eyes, nose. Look at that. The whole thing. We got the brow. Down here is uh, is where the rest of it is. Is there's bushes and muck and who knows? Is that his hand up? You know, there there appears to be what could be fingers in this area here. So, is it his hand? Does he have something in it? Is there a little one with him? I don't know. But this is disturbing data, and uh, and absolutely at this point, uh, you know, I have an obligation to uh, to further look into it. Look at the mouth movement there. Yeah. Here he is. There's the line of his mouth, the nose. You can see banking 